Section 26, the mean value theorem for integrals. And yes, this is a terrible name. There's a mean value theorem for derivatives. There's a mean value theorem for integrals. The, re the situations where you use this is where a question asks you what is the average value of a function over an interval. So maybe they give you a velocity graph and then they want you to figure out, you know, from the graph and the equation, what the average velocity was on a trip, and you'd use this because they're looking for the average value of the graph on the interval. Uh, real quick rehash of the difference between our two mean value theorems. So our mean value theorem for integrals is one where, hey, we have some shape like this, and we were like, what's the average height of this thing on this interval? And so all we do is find the area of the two things and divide it by the width of the interval. So the, this distance is the width. So area divided by width, that's our average value. Uh, the one for derivatives is the one where we have some sort of graph here, we still have an interval, so I'll go from here to here. And we say, hey, uh, the average slope from here to here is negative something small, but where does our graph have that slope? Where does that slope match our uh, instantaneous slope? And it matches like right around here on this graph. And that looks like the only place where it matches on this particular graph. You could also say it matches right at the end there, potentially, but this would be our spot where the mean value theorem satisfied. This idea of a spot where the mean value theorem is satisfied applies also over here. If we were to figure this one out, potentially the line would be like here where our average height was. like, yeah. And... Uh, we could figure out where that height occurs on our graph, and so we could figure out the values where the mean value theorem for integrals is satisfied also by finding the x values where it has the height that we figure out the average value. But most of the time, use the mean value theorem. What you actually care about is that average value, and so we're going to be finding that first. So let's actually do one. We have a problem up here. What is the average value of this function on the interval 1 to 4? Well. Here's what we do. To find the area, we integrate from 1 to 4 of x squared plus 3x plus 2 dx. And then what we're going to do is divide this by the width of the interval, which is 4 minus 1, which is 3. So I'm going to continue solving this. I'm going to do the antiderivative, x cubed over 3 plus 3x squared over 2 plus 2x, and then we're going to divide that final answer by 3. Now I'm going to plug in the bounds. 4 cubed is 64. Uh, 4 squared is 16, so it would be 48 over 2 there. 3 times 16. Uh, 2 times 4 is 8. Cool, that's with 4 plugged in. Now with 1 plugged in, I get this is much easier. One third plus three halves plus two. And it's all divided by three. Uh, okay, this is a situation where we're going to combine a lot of uh, fractions here. So 64 thirds minus one third is 63 thirds. 48 halves minus three halves is 45 halves. And 8 minus 2 is 6. Uh, and now I could combine the light terms on top. This is 21. 63 divided by 3 is a whole number. This is 27.5. So 21 plus 27, or 22.5, whoops. Sake. So 21 plus 22.5 is 43.5, plus 6 is 49.5, so this is 49.5 over 3. Uh, and then 49.5 divided by 3 is 16.5. Uh, and that would be our average value on the interval.
So that would be the answer to this question as it's asked. Now if we wanted to find the x value, we'd have to plug this in for y. So 16.5 equals x squared plus 3x plus 2. And just solve for where this is. This wouldn't be nice if they didn't assign in the problem, but you would solve this by subtracting 16.5 over to the other side. And getting 0 is equal to x squared plus 3x minus 14.5. And then using the quadratic formula on this because there's probably not a way that this factors really nicely. That's it for the mean value theorem.